All right, a big box came in the mail today. Uh, so I needed to create some calibration standards, so I, I asked Keysight if they could loan me a unit. And uh, it turns out that uh, Daniel, uh, you may have watched the Keysight University and different Keysight um, videos and stuff. Uh, Daniel's the guy on all of those videos. And uh, he, had, he had one, so he sent it out to me on a, on a loaner basis. And so it is basically an updated version of this big box here. And uh, it's a super duper one. Uh, it's got a lot of options in it also. So it has DC bias options and things like that. So let me turn it on here. All right, so this is the Keysight E4980A. Uh, it measures between 20 hertz and two megahertz, so perfect range. Um, this one doesn't go down low. I would like it if it went down low, but uh, this one, this one does not. So it comes with uh, nothing. <laughs> and I noticed when I turned it on, there's an actual power counter. How many times has the instrument been turned on? And how many hours has the instrument been on? And I'm the first one to turn it on, I believe, uh, at least for any length of time. Um, so uh, it has the standard uh, four Kelvin uh, connections. So uh, we'll have to use my uh, we'll have to use my uh, fixture on it. There we go. So if you notice uh, that it is flickering between femtoamps and I mean, uh, femtofarads and attofarads. Yeah, attofarads. <laughs> so it's got a really, really good zero in it. Uh, let's see here, measurement setup. Let's turn averaging on. Uh, here's averaging. I'll go ahead and set averaging to eight. Let it, uh, let it settle down here. Yeah, there's still a lot of noise between uh, femtoamps and uh, femt I want to say femtoamps, femtofarads and attofarads. That's just words I have never said before. <laughs> and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, pop in a device here. And this is a thousand puff, uh, thousand puff capacitor. That's what it's measuring. Um, currently, we are measuring at one kilohertz. Uh, we could pop in a different device here. This one is 10 nanofarads. And look at the accuracy, uh, five digits after the decimal place. <laughs> That's just nuts. That's absolute nuts. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. So let's go ahead and measure. So the two that I just put in there are 1% values. And this is certainly within, just squeaks in under 1%. Um, 101 would be 1%, 10109. So it just squeaks under 1%. This is a 1%. Uh, let's see how he's doing. Um, yeah, he's doing, he's doing, he's doing fine. All right, it's like 0.2%. Um, now I have some capacitors like, like this one that is a 0.3%. So let's pop him in. And he is measuring 15.753, 7.53, and it's marked 7.52, um, 7.52. And uh, let's change the, uh, let's change the frequency, seven, oh, 7.53, yeah. Uh, let's see, we can change the frequency right here. We can take it down to uh, 20 hertz. 7.6, going the wrong direction. One kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. So at 10, 10 kilohertz, it's measuring exactly what it's, what it's marked on the front. So I'm not sure exactly what, what they used. Uh, this one is marked 0.3% as well. Let's see how he does. And uh, it's within 0.1%, 0.17%. So he's good. And I have these little guys here. These guys are uh, half a percent. And 158. 
and this one is 325 very nice and this one is oops and this one is 180 so all of these capacitors that I'm just showing here I'm going to create these as secondary standards I'm going to measure them uh, in uh, careful conditions and everything and write all these down and then these will become my standards that I'm, that I'm going to use now the cool thing about this instrument also is it uh, let's see here measurement set, set up list set up uh, yeah I don't have it set up quite yet I'll, I'll show it in a different video but you can have it actually sweep frequency, you can have it sweep DC bias, you can have it sweep all sorts of different parameters or an actual fixed table. So I'm gonna be measuring all of these capacitors all at different, uh, at different frequencies. And uh, this will go ahead and measure that I'm at all those, a single button, it'll measure all of those frequencies and then uh, write to a USB, uh, thumb drive as a uh, Excel spreadsheet. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, I've recalled my data that I had stored on the uh, USB drive. And you can see here, uh, hopefully it shows up on screen, but 20 hertz, 100 hertz, one kilohertz, 10, 20, 40, 100, 24, four, uh, 1000, uh, ah, 100K, 200K, 400K, one meg, and then two megs on the next screen over, all right. And then what you do is on measurement setup, uh, you set triggering to manual, okay? And so you uh, put in a device, all right? And you do measurement and you do list and you have this list here, okay? Now I'm gonna hit trigger and you watch it populate. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. We need to go to save, save data. We need to start a log. Okay. And then we can go back out. We can do list sweep. And then we can, here's uh, the frequency of test and here's capacitance and here's D. And if I hit trigger, then it automatically measures all of those values. And then I go back and I can save the data uh, in a uh, comma separated variable uh, Excel type uh, file on the card and all that data is now available. So yeah, that's really, really nice. I'll be doing that, generating some secondary standards and uh, yeah, playing around, seeing what else this thing can do. Uh, yeah, one of the things it can do, let's see here, let me, uh, let me change, let me change this. Let me just put this, let me just put this in so we have uh, something in here. Let me go back to measurement setup and I'll go to auto, auto trigger. There we go. All right. So we have um, measurements being measurements being made. And um, I can actually turn on the DC bias. This light comes on. And so right now uh, my bias is set to zero volts, uh, but I can go here to bias. And I can see, okay, I want to measure this at seven volts. And now the bias is set to seven volts. Now there's seven volts across the uh, capacitor while it's actually measuring, uh, measuring that. And if you put a, uh, well, here, I'll just do it. <clears throat> if you actually put, is that in camera? No, it's not in camera. If I take my voltmeter, whoa, <laughs> I throw it on the floor. All right, and we measure across the capacitor. You see that we're measuring seven volts. So we're applying an actual DC uh, voltage across the capacitor while under test. So that's that's all built in. Some I have some equipment that you can do it with external. I haven't really set it up yet, but supposedly I can do I can I can use the box underneath here for the DC as an external power supply and everything, but I haven't tried it out yet. This thing's got it all built in, which is, which is super, super nice. Um, I might use this to measure some of those funny 
Chinese capacitors that seem to vary with voltage. The capacitance seem to vary with voltage, and I'll see if I can't reproduce that here on this on this machine. That'll be a that'll be a fun video. Anyway, just wanted to show a quick video here on. Uh, I have a uh, instrument to help me out on my uh, uh, journey of trying to get this other LCR meter up and running, create some Cal standards, and hopefully be able to tweak the other other machine into giving me some good results. It's pretty close. The other machine is very, very close right now. Just needs some fine tuning. I'm not quite sure how to do that yet, but uh, yeah, we will, we will find out. But uh, yeah, what a, what a cool machine here. Yeah, one femtofarad. <laughs> it's pretty cool.